Hello, welcome back to Algebra. The title of this lesson is Solving Linear Systems of Equations with Three Variables Using the Triangle Method. This is part one of several. You might actually also see this called the Linear Combination Method. Uh, and also, this is a good introduction because later on down the road in Algebra, we're going to be studying the concept of what we call matrix or matrices, which is very closely tied to what we're doing here. So it's a good introduction to things that we're going to be learning down the road. Now, in the last lessons, we've learned how to solve these types of equations when they're already in triangular form. And I told you it's easy to solve those because you can just substitute, you can do substitution two times and you get the values. But that only works if the system is already in triangular form because the substitutions become easy to do as you kind of go up like that. So you should have already seen in the last couple of lessons how we're doing that. Here we're taking the training wheels off. We're going to give you a system of equations that is not in triangular form. Step number one is going to be to is going to be to be able to put it into triangular form. And then after it's in triangular form, we already know how to solve that. We did it in the last couple of lessons, so we'll be using the same technique there. So how do we put a system of equations into triangular form? Basically, we have to manipulate the uh, uh, equations, the set of equations, using some rules I'm going to give you. They're very logical and they're very easy to understand in principle what you're supposed to do, but these kinds of problems can get very confusing because you're doing a lot of things at once to try to get it into triangular form. So I'm going to introduce some notation and I, I really would like you to give it a shot doing your problems the way I'm writing it down here. Some people are going to ignore it and do it their own way and, and then it's very easy to forget what you're doing. And you'll see as we go through it how to get it into triangular form. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but it's very, very understandable. All right, so there's a couple of rules. How do we make these uh, equations into triangular form? We have three rules that we can uh, use to put it into triangular form. I'm going to say them out loud and then I'm going to write them on the board because they're very, very important that you understand them. The first thing we can do is we can multiply equations, both sides of the equal signs, by any number we want, negative or positive, or fractions, by the way. We can also add equations together. We've been adding equations when we solve systems of equations in the past, so it shouldn't be a surprise that we can add them. You can also subtract them, but I don't, I don't like saying subtraction because you know subtraction is just uh, multiplying by a negative and then adding. So when you, when you say you multiply by any number and you say you can add them, you're covering subtraction in there. So, but some books is gonna, are gonna tell you that you can subtract these equations. It's the same thing as addition with a negative sign. And the third thing you can do is you can change the order of the equations. You can move one equation to the top, to the bottom. You can change the order because the order of the equations that I write down doesn't actually change anything. So you can multiply the equation by numbers, uh, any equations by numbers. You can add them and you can change the order. And it turns out that those three things allow you to take any system of equations uh, that I can just make up and change it into triangular form. So let me write the rules down real quick. And um, then we're going to give a, get a practical example and you'll understand how you're supposed to really do this. The first rule is you can multiply equations by any number. The number can be fractions, it could be a negative sign, positive sign, whatever. Rule number two, you can add equations together. Okay, and then the third rule is you can change order of the equations. All right, this is going to go much, much faster if we just get an example down so we can start talking about it. Here is the system of equations. X plus Y minus uh, 2 times Z is equal to 7. That's equation number 1. Next one is negative X plus 4 times Y. Uh, plus 3 times z is equal to 2. Third equation is 2x minus 3y plus 2z is equal to negative 2. Let me double check my system. x plus y minus 2z is 7. Negative x plus 4y plus 3z is equal to 2. 2x minus 3y plus 2z is equal to negative 2. Now this obviously is not in triangular form. You see, the a triangular form means you want three variables in the first equation, two variables in the second equation, and one variable in the third. Because once you have that third equation with only one variable, like let's pretend this was all gone, the third equation was just this. I would divide and I would get z, and then bam, I would have one third, I would have the z value, and then I could go back upstairs and substitute into the next equation up above and so on to get the other values. But it's not in triangular form. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these rules to make this set of equations into a triangular set of equations. But before I jump into that, I want to talk to you about one thing before we get a little, little farther along into in here. Depending on what book you're using, 
Some books will try to teach you to solve a system of equations like this using substitution. And I want to say up front, it is perfectly fine. You can always use substitution. Substitution of variables can certainly be used to solve this system of equations. However, in my opinion, having done it this way, uh, using substitution and doing it this the way that we're going to talk about here, putting it into triangular form, um, I think that using triangular form is v far superior to substitution. Because let's just examine what we would have to do if we were going to if we we're going to use substitution to solve this system. What you would do is you would solve, let's pretend you solve this equation for x. That means you have to move values over to the other side. You would have x is equal to, you'd move the y over, you'd move the 2z over, and the 7's already there, and you would have uh, an equation. Then you could take this and you could solve it for x as well. You could, uh, I'm sorry, I scratched that. You could solve this guy for x. You would have y's and z's on the other side. Then you would take that value of x and stick it into this equation. And you would also take that same thing you found for x and you would have to stick it into the third equation. Because notice when you solve this thing for x, you're going to have y's and z's. If you put it in here, you're going to have y's and z's and you already have y's and z's. So you're going to have an equation that has only y's and z's for the second equation. You take that and put it here, same thing. You have y's and z's here. This was solved for y's and z's. So you're going to have y's and z's. So if you solve this for x and whatever you get, you stick that large expression into here, then these two equations are not going to have x anymore. They're going to have only y's and z's. Two equations and two unknowns, y's and z's, right? You already know how to solve equations with two equations and two unknowns. You can use substitution, you can use addition, you can even use graphing. But use one of those methods to find y and z because two equations and two unknowns, you've done that many times, we've done it in the past. You take the y and z value that you calculate and then you stick it back into the first equation, put it in here, and then you'll get the x value. Now, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just practically it's very hard to do it because in this case, the equation has a one in front of the x, but if I have a number in front of x, then to solve for x, I'm gonna move this junk to the right and I'll have to, I'll say it was three, I'd have to divide by three. And then I would have fractions all throughout this expression, I would have to substitute them in and I have fractions everywhere. So really, really quickly, you get to situations where you have fractions everywhere. And then you have to add fractions, multiply fractions, and, su and substitute with fractions, and it gets very cumbersome. So you cannot eliminate dealing with fractions really totally, but it's easy to get confused on what to do with substitution. So we're gonna use putting this thing into the triangle method. What we wanna do is we want the first equation to remain exactly as it is. We want the second equation to not have an x value, only y's and z's, and we want the third equation to eliminate the x and the y's here so it only has z. So for the third equation, you want it to look something like this, and for the second equation, you want it to have two terms like this, and then the third equation up top, you don't want it to be changed at all. So let's go through our rules one by one. Multiply equations by a number. Why am I allowed to multiply this equation by a number? Because if I multiply the left and I multiply the right, the equation can remain balanced. So you're not changing the equation, you're just changing the coefficient. So I can multiply this equation by 2 if I want to. I can multiply this equation by negative 5 if I want to. I can multiply this equation by 1 half if I want to. As long as I'm doing it to both sides, I don't change the system of equations. And I don't have to multiply the equations by the same number. I can, as long as I'm doing the same thing to both sides, I can multiply by any number I want. Okay. Second equation, add equations together. Why am I allowed to add these equations together, for instance? I'm allowed to add them because of the following. Let's look at this e middle equation here, right? If I add the left-hand side of this equation, x plus y minus 2z, if I add it to the left, then to balance this equation, I'll have to add it to the right, right? The x plus y minus 2z, I can add it to the left and I'll add it to the right. But I know that this x plus y minus 2z is actually equal to 7. So on the right-hand side, I'm not going to put this giant thing on the right. I'm just going to add the 7 on the right. That is why you're allowed to add them up, because all you're doing is you're adding this term to both sides of the equation, but we know that this term is just 7, so on the right, we're just going to add 7. Ultimately, what means is that you can add the left-hand side and the right-hand sides together. It doesn't change anything, because you're adding the same thing to both sides, even though it doesn't look like it. But because they're equivalent, you are adding the same thing to both sides. And then I can change the order of the equations. In other words, if I write it down like this, or if I were to erase this thing and move this equation on top, the 2x minus 3y plus 2z is equal to negative 2. If that was the first one here and I erase it, I don't change the system of equations. I can move them around uh, in the ordering. It doesn't matter. 
So now that you understand all of the rules, we're going to talk about the game plan. In this second equation, we want the x to be gone. In the third equation, we want the x and the y to be gone. So here's how you handle it. And it's going to take a little while for you to get it, but we are going to get there. So what I'm going to do is draw a little dividing bar. We want the first equation to be untouched. So I'm going to rewrite it identically the same as it says. x plus y minus 2z is equal to 7. And then over here, I'm going to draw a little dividing bar. And over here, I have some notes for myself. What I want to do is figure out how I can eliminate this value of x from the second equation by using only these rules. Notice that I have an x in the first equation and a negative x in the second equation. So if I were to just add these equations together, I would add the, the, these, the x terms, the y terms, and the z terms on the left, but the x terms would go away because it would be x plus a negative x. So then you see, by adding them together, I eliminate the x for the second variable, now, for the second equation. So on, over here, for my notes to myself, I'm going to tell myself that in this row here, what I'm really doing is I'm taking row number one and I'm adding it to row number two. I'm starting to talk about these equations being in terms of rows. So you can think of this as row number one, this is row number two, and this is row number three. You can think of it as equation one, equation two, and equation three. And what this is telling me is that in this row number two, the new version of the system, I'm going to just add these equations together because of course it's one of my rules. So x plus the negative x will give me 0x, y plus the 4y is going to give me 5y, and negative 2z plus the 3z is going to give me a positive 1z, so there's a 1 right here, and then 7 plus 2 on the right is going to give me 9. You see all I've done is I've said in this row I'm adding this to this and the answer goes in this row. I'm adding these together, and the answer to that is going to go here. This equation looks very, very different than this one, but here's the thing. It doesn't change the solutions of this system of equations. Even though this equation looks completely different than this one, it doesn't change the answers. Why is one half equal to 50 over 100? Why is one third, you know, equal to, you know, three ninths, right? One third, three ninths. 50 over 100, one half. You see, they look different, but they're the same thing. Why can't I take an equation and multiply by two on both sides? It changes all the numbers. But because you're doing it to both sides, it represents the same thing. All we're doing here is we're taking this equation, we've added this to it, and since we know that this is equal to seven, we're adding the same thing to the right by adding the seven on the right. This equation looks different, but it doesn't change the solution of what we're doing. And then notice what's happened. We're kind of approaching triangular form. We've gotten rid of this term, okay? The next thing, we want to now, we can't do too many things at once. We're going to now take and eliminate only the 2x term from right here. Okay, We have to do things in steps. We can't eliminate everything. We want both of these gone, but in the first step we're just going to eliminate this guy. How do we do that? Well, we, if we just add this equation to this one, then it's not going to work. It's going to be 1 plus 2. That's going to give me 3x. It's not going to work. But what can I do to this so that when I add it to this it goes away? Well, if I say negative 2 times equation number 1 plus equation number 3, so negative 2 times row 1 plus row 3, if I put that in this position, then it should work out fine. Why? Because if I multiply by negative 2, I'm going to have a negative 2x. And then if I add this here, the negative 2 and the positive 2 is going to eliminate and go away. So you see, I'm actually doing two things here. I'm multiplying one of the equations by a number, which that's allowed. And then I'm taking the result of that and I'm adding it to another equation. That's also allowed. So you're allowed to do both of them at the same time because each step is individually allowed. So you have to multiply this by negative 2 and then add it to this. That's going to give you 0x. But if I multiply this by negative 2, it'll be negative 2y and I add it to this. Negative 2 plus a negative 3 is going to give me negative 5y. I'm going to take and multiply this by negative 2. That's going to give me negative, positive 4, so negative 2 times po negative 2 is positive 4z. Positive 4 plus this is going to give me 6z. All right? And then the same thing here. i got to do negative 2. That's going to give me negative 14. Negative 14 plus the negative 2 is going to give me negative 16. So I get 5y plus 6z is equal to negative 16. I cannot stress enough that this system of equations here is exactly equivalent to this one from the point of view of what the answer is going to be. The solution is going to be the same. So we had to take this by negative 2 and add it to here. That gives me 0. Negative 2, add it to here, gives me negative 5. Negative 2 times this gives me positive 4, plus this is 6. 
negative 2 times this is negative 14 plus this is negative 16. So here we're getting close to triangular form, but we're not there yet. Why? Because for triangular form, we want the third equation to only have one variable. So we want to eliminate this one. So ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to, we want the first equation to remain untouched and unchanged. So we're going to say x plus y minus 2z is equal to 7. The second equation we also want, we want to remain untouched. 5y plus z is equal to 9 because our goal is to get to triangular form. And over here I'm going to write some notes to myself. What do I need to do to get the third equation in line? I want to get rid of this negative 5y. How do I do it? The easiest way you see, I've got a 5y here. I'll just add these equations together. So in the note to myself, I'm going to say I'm going to take row number 2 and I'm going to add it to row number 3 and the result of this is going to go into row number 3. So when I add 5 to negative 5, I get a 0. When I add 1 to 6, I'm going to get 7z. And I, when I add the 9 to the uh, negative 16, I'm going to get negative 7. And now what you have here is triangle form. Triangle form. If I were to give you this set of equations just like this, you would say, I know how to solve this. We've done this in the last lesson. I'll solve for z, put it into here and get y, take y and z, put it into here, and I'll get x. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's move over to the other board. I'm going to rewrite what I have. x plus y minus 2z is equal to 7. The next equation is 5y plus z is equal to 9, and then I have 7z is equal to negative 7. And now we want to finish up here. So we're going to take this third equation and we're going to say z is equal to the negative 7 over 7, which means that z is equal to negative 1. So that's one of the answers. And then I'm going to take this answer and I'm going to plug it in to the equation immediately above it. 5y plus z is 9. I'm going to take and stick it in the value for z. The negative 1 goes here, and then I'm going to get the 9. 5y, I'm going to add 1 to both sides, it's going to give me 10, and I'll divide by 5, so then y will be equal to 2. And now I have two of the three variables, and then all I have to do is take these two values that I have over here, the z value and the y value, and I'm going to plug in to the top equation. This is exactly what we've done in the last lesson minus 2z is equal to 7. So the x value is what I want, the y value is equal to 2, the z value is equal to negative 1, don't forget your parentheses, like this. And then x plus 2, this will become a positive 2. And then x plus 4 is equal to 7. Now I subtract the 4 from both sides and I'm going to get 3. So you should get a value, let me double check myself, of um, Z of x is equal to 3. So you have the x value, the y value, and the z value. That means there's actually only one solution, even though there's three numbers, they're parts of a point. The x value of this point is 3, the y value is 2, and the z value is negative 1. This is the final answer. 3, 2, negative 1. Now, some people would argue with me that, that this is better than uh, just doing substitution. Again, to do substitution, I have to solve this thing for x and stick the relation I get into this position and also into this position, and then I would have two equations and two unknowns I would have to solve for x and y, and then I would have, I'm sorry, y and z, and then I would have to go back and get the value of x. You can do it, okay? There's nothing wrong with it. It's just always cumbersome. Here, I think it's a little bit more methodical of what you're doing, right? You're like, okay, I want to get this to triangular form. Notice the strategy here. What you want is your first equation at the top is the one that you really want to leave alone. You want to have the equation at the top, the one that you want to leave untouched. And then you want to use the coefficient in front of x to be able to eliminate the two values of x underneath, right? So when we take and we add these guys together, uh, I'm sorry, these guys together to eliminate the value of x in this equation, and then we multiply by negative 2 to add here to eliminate the value of x here. So you're using the first equation to eliminate x in the second and the third equation. They're gone now. Then you use the second equation to eliminate the value of y right here. In this case, we just had to add them together, right? You can see, you can see your notes here, what you did to get this step here. So the way you read it is these steps that you were doing, that's how you achieve this line of math right here. This little instruction is how you achieve this line of math, because if you just look at the math, it's real hard to see what you did. You have to have notes for yourself uh, there. And then once you get it into triangular form, you can then solve it. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview. 
Later on, again, we're gonna learn about what we call matrix math, matrices. There's a whole branch of math called linear algebra that deals with these linear equations and, and deals with solving them. And, and, and this whole thing, has, there's a lot more to it than what we're doing here. There's a bunch of different techniques of manipulating equations to solve them. But this method that you're using is something that you're gonna learn in much richer detail down the road. So it's not wasted effort, it's not wasted energy. Uh, but it is, it is something that we will be using. Uh, like I said, there's a whole branch of math that deals with basically this, these kinds of problems. All right, so here we're gonna work on our next problem. The system of equations looks like this. We have two times x minus y minus z is equal to two. And then we have x minus five y plus three z is equal to negative 13. And then we have negative two x uh, minus 2y plus z is equal to negative 2. The first thing you want to do is check and make sure the system is correct. 2x minus y minus z is 2. x minus 5y plus 3z is negative 13. Uh, negative 2x, negative 2y plus z is equal to negative 2. Now, in this set of equations, I already had it set up where I knew that this first equation, this x term, would could be used to eliminate the x here and could be used to eliminate the x here, just with multiplying and adding. Okay, so notice that it's nice when your top equation has no coefficient, just a one here, because I can multiply this by anything I want to cancel below it. Now, in this set of equations, the my my uh, equation that has a coefficient of one is the middle equation. So if I wanted to, I could use this rule right here that says I can change the order of the equations. It doesn't affect anything. If I want to, in the next step, I could rewrite the system where this one is equation number one, then this one could be equation number two, and this one could be equation number three. Truthfully, I think it actually might, might yield a little bit simpler solution. But the way I actually did it on my paper is I didn't do that. And I'm kind of using this as an example to show you that there's more than one way to do a problem. It is absolutely fine to rewrite the system where this is the first equation and then the other two are underneath. But it's also absolutely fine to leave it alone and just use what I have here. So since I did it like this in my notes, that's how I'm gonna do it here in the lesson. The goal is to get the triangular form. In the next version of the equations, we wanna eliminate the x variable from here and we wanna eliminate the negative two x variable from here. Then we'll worry about eliminating y down the road. So for this next version, we wanna take the first equation and leave it alone. Generally, that's what you wanna do. You don't wanna mess around with the first equation. 2x minus y minus z is equal to two. And then I need to write myself some notes. What do I wanna do over here for my second equation? Notice I have a two and I have a one x. So I, if I just add them together like they are, it's gonna give me three x, okay? But what I can do is I can say that I can take equation number one, row number one, and I can add to it this equation, but I'll change it so I multiply this equation by negative two first. Make sure you understand what I'm doing. I'm taking the second equation, row two, I'm multiplying by negative two, that'll give me a negative two x, and then I'm adding to the equation above. So the negative has to be there so that they'll cancel out. That's why I have to multiply by negative two. Negative two x plus two x will give me zero. That's gonna eliminate it. I'm gonna add these together, multiply and add, and I'm gonna put the result in that uh, position. So then what I'm gonna have is, when I take this times negative two and add it to this guy, now I'm gonna get a zero for x, right? If I take negative two times this guy, I'm gonna get a positive 10. If I add positive 10 to negative one, I'm gonna get a positive nine y. If I take the negative two times this, I'm gonna get negative six. Negative six plus the negative one is negative seven z. And if I take the negative two times this, it'll give me a positive 26. Positive 26 plus the two is 28. I, in every one of those steps, I just follow the same rule. Multiply the negative two here, add it to the previous line. Multiply by negative two, add it to the previous line. Multiply by negative two, add it to the previous line. But by doing that, I canceled and eliminated the x variable. Now the third line is actually easier. Notice I have a 2x and a negative 2x. So all I have to do to eliminate x there is to take row number one and add it to row number three and put the result in the third position. So when I add this to this, I get a zero x. When I add this to this, the negative one and the negative two, I get a negative three y, right? And then when I add the, the, this to this, because I'm adding this equation to this, the negative one, the positive one gives me zero, so I don't have to write anything there. And then the two and the negative two give me a zero. 
So you see what happened? It kind of fell out that I have three variables, two variables, one variable. I have it in triangular form. If it's not quite in triangular form, then you'd have to continue doing these manipulations to get it into triangular form, right? But now that it's there, we can just solve the problem. So now we're gonna say negative three y is equal to zero, and we can divide y is zero over negative three. But that just means that y is equal to zero. Anything divided, zero divided by anything is zero. And then I can say, I can take this guy and plug it into the equation directly above, which is nine y minus seven times z is 28. But y is zero, so it's nine times zero minus seven times z is 28. So what I get is zero here, so it's negative seven z is 28. I can divide by negative seven, I know that seven times four is 28, so I'll get a negative four for z, a negative four. And then you take this value of z along with this value of y that you know, and you stick it into the third equation, which is right here. It's gonna be two x minus y minus z is equal to two. So we have two times x minus y, but y is zero, minus z, but z is negative four. Don't forget to open your parentheses because it's minus a negative four is two. So two x, that's gone. I have plus four is equal to two. Two x, I have two minus four, I'll get a negative two. And then x will be negative two divided by two will give me a positive one. And I'll get a positive, uh, sorry, not a positive one, negative one. See, everybody makes mistakes. Negative two divided by two, x is gonna be a negative one like this. So I have the three values for each uh, part of the point that I have here, but that corresponds to basically one point solution. The x value of that point is negative one. The y value of that point is zero. And the z value of that point is negative four. So negative one comma zero comma four, of course that's x, that's y, that's z, and this is my one solution. So that's all the problems I have for this lesson, but I just wanna close by talking about a few things. Just kind of get a few things um, out in the open that I wanna make sure you understand. First of all, you can totally use substitution to solve this set of equations like I showed you in the last lesson. You can do that. But notice how it can be very cumbersome to take and solve one of these things for x, move these terms over, take that whole large term, stick it in the x position, stick it in the x position, multiply it all out, collect all the terms, then you're still gonna have two equations with two unknowns, y and z. And you'll still have to either add them, multiply them, you have to substitute, you have to do something to find y and z. We've learned how to do those types of systems of equations with two values, two, two variables and two uh, equations. And then you'll get those and you'll stick them back in and get uh, the x value. You can totally do that, but it, it just, it, it yields a bunch of spaghetti mess on there. And also this method of this triangular form method, right now we're doing it for x, y, and z, three variables. But this whole method is actually extensible to, what if you have four equations and four unknowns? What if you have five equations and five unknowns? This whole thing of making it a triangular form, it actually works for much larger systems of equations. So it's very extensible to more advanced math. That's why we learned it here. It also ties in with matrices. When we do mat matrix math later on, you're going to be using this, especially when you get into linear algebra, you're gonna be using this to manipulate large systems of equations. Doing substitutions with spaghetti mess of substituting it works for three variables, it starts to get cumbersome. Anything higher than that, it gets so hard to do that it just makes it very, very difficult. So this is the technique that we're gonna be using in this class. The last thing I'm gonna say is that I solve the system exactly as it sits, but I could, if I wanted to, make this the first equation. And if I do that, I would have different rules that I would be using this equation to multiply and add. But if I did the problem again with this equation on top and using that to multiply and add, the intermediate equations would look a little different, but the final answers would always be the same. So no matter which of these rules you use, whether or not you change the order of the equation, what you multiply by, what you add by, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do. If you use these rules correctly in the method that I'm showing you here, you will always get the correct answer. So what I want you to do is make sure you can solve all of these yourself. And then it's very, very important with this to make sure you can do it yourself, especially with writing your little notes in the margin on how you're doing the manipulations, all that stuff's critical. And then follow me on to the next lesson. We're gonna get some more practice with solving linear systems of equations with three variables using this triangle method. We also call it the method of linear combinations. We have other names for it when we get into linear algebra down the road. 
code, but essentially we're using linear combinations and triangle method to solve these systems of equations. So do these and follow me on to the next lesson and we'll get some more practice right now.